Welcome to Shorty Super Coach. Going to take a look at our forwards, all the relevant forwards. So, like I've done with the defenders, rucks, and midfield, anyone that's got an ownership of at least three percent, I'll take a bit of a look at. So, yeah, but it does feel a bit weird. I mean, we're a couple of days out, and we're not even really sure if we're playing. Um, could get an update any moment. I think it's going to happen on Wednesday. Part of me hopes we play. Part of me hopes we shouldn't. Or you know, it's a very weird situation. I want to hear the roar of the crowd, but I'm also dying for some footy. It's it's a really interesting situation. But And obviously there's way bigger things, more pressing matters in the overall bigger picture thing in the world. But um, for us footy lovers, gee, it, it couldn't go. <laughs> gee, we could do with some footy. We could do with some footy. But um, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Um and I reckon that might have been an update staring me right in the face just an hour ago. So, oh yeah, looks like there will be. But um, probably could have read the AFL website before I started my video. But um, give the Patreon a little shout out to Thomas has just jumped on board. So we're starting to get some numbers up, which is awesome. Um, I think we're up to six or seven in total, which is really good. Um, there is one more league available. That'll get released at the death, you know, on the eve of round one when it does happen. But for those, I know Thomas, he signed up and he's in there at the moment. Anyone else who wants to get in the mid-price of the league, they'll get that code ahead of time. And I will be looking to add a couple of things too to, to give a bit more of an in-season product as well. But um, nonetheless, let's take a look at the forwards. And the forward line has proven pretty tough over the journey throughout our pre-season. There's been a couple of locks in my opinion, but otherwise... That F3 position's been really tricky. So let's take a look at everyone that's relevant and I'll give my two cents on them. And I'll be timestamped as well, just like every other video. So Lockie Whitfield, plain and simple, lock him into your team. He's a smooth mover, one of the best going around. Probably the best kick in the competition, both left and right. And he's an absolute lock given he's available as a forward. Get him in your team. Michael Walters, 14% of sides. I've got a little bit of a concern about how much time he'll spend forward. I also don't really view him as a bloke that we should start with because over the journey he's really had his indiscretions with suspension and injury as well. Um, he tends to be, I know he's had some good seasons of late, but he tends to be somewhat inconsistent at times. And I feel as if there is a chance he could spend a touch more time forward because he just is so dangerous in the forward line and the Dockers don't have a stack of options up there. But I don't like picking blokes where I'm just not 100% sure where they'll line up each week. I like to think, bang, if this like, if the game's on the line, he's in the middle. You know, He's attending centre bounces, giving himself plenty of chances to score points. I'm not sure if Walters will do that, but I reckon we'll want him at some stage throughout the season. I'm just not starting him. Dustin Martin, similar as I said to Whitfield, one of the best players in the game. And it's plain and simple, you should just have him in your team. He's an absolute lock. Um, well, Gary Abbott, 1% of sides. Who would have thought the day had come where the Lamaster was in just in 1% of sides? But um, that's fair enough. Isaac Heaney's in 9% of sides. I'm not really sure why, because I know he played that last practice game, but interrupted pre-season with Franklin still... I think he's definitely missing round one if it does happen this week. He is the bloke. Heaney definitely plays more forward when Franklin's out. They like the way he competes up there. I wish he'd just get unleashed in the midfield. When he does, he'll be a lock. And, and a bit like Walters, I reckon he'll be a guy that's in our sides at some stage throughout the season. Not sure we should start him. And he's one of my faves, so it hurts me to say. But um, Toby Green, 10% of teams. It's just something about Toby that, I don't know, I don't know, he's a gun player, but I've got a lot of giants in my team and probably didn't want to stack too many more in there. And and he also has his trouble with the tribunal and, and just finds himself in situations. Very good scorer. I'm not sure if he's going to go too much beyond your mid-90s, but he's a quality player and I think, again, I would like to have him in our team some stage throughout the year I'd reckon but I'm not sure he's the type to start with but that's just my opinion Jeremy Cameron 3% of teams I've got no idea why he's in 3% of sides key forward one of the best don't get me wrong but 
Jazza should not be in our side, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Jack Siebel, 1% of teams, but if he does play midfield, it wouldn't surprise me if he returns a solid average of in the early 90s and makes himself a top 8 to 10 forward. So hasn't been spoken about at all, but I don't think he's one of the worst selections going around. I, I certainly wouldn't sit here and say pick the bloke. But just it's a bit like Lockie Waller, who's also in 1% of sides. Just wanted to put it on the record. Wouldn't surprise me if he surprises us. Jordan Dugowie, 7% of teams. Getting a little bit sucked into the wow factor, I reckon. Um, again, without Trelaw and Adams, uh, he did play a bit through the middle. But again, uncertainty around his position. I don't like players that spend a lot of time forward. They can get cold. They can miss out on point scoring opportunities. So it's a no for me. Jordan Dawson, I touched on him in the back line. So I'll briefly touch on it again. I reckon that second Pracky game would have concerned a few, didn't set the world on fire, probably would have needed a little bit more encouragement, I reckon, to really start with him. So 6% ownership sounds about right. Promising player, but I'm not too sure. You really needed that push in the right direction. He, he didn't give that at all. Darcy Parrish did play some good footy through the practice matches, but I do see him spending a fair bit more time in the forward line as well. A bit of an even split. Yeah, he's pretty handy around goals, but the Bombers have quite a few running through there. you got Merritt, Heppel, Scheel. Um, McGrath's really advanced in there as well. So I just don't see him getting enough time to be a reliable scorer. And I'd imagine he'd average similar, mid-80s to high-80s. And if he has a ripper year, maybe early 90s. And maybe that's what 3% of people are hoping for. But I reckon there's better options out there. Hugh Greenwood, he was a real buzz early, and I led a fair bit of that buzz. I was certainly well on board. But he does so much inside work, but maybe just doesn't do enough on the outside. His, his spread and his running game... I needed to see a little bit more because I was red hot on him and I still reckon he'll be a solid scorer. But he probably just, I'm not sure he has that ceiling because he just can't quite get enough on the outside to, to add on to what a lot of footballers search for and that's contested footy. He gets 10 to 14 of those pretty easily per game, which is awesome numbers. But I'm not too sure that he can push his average too much far past the early 90s, which would probably still be acceptable, but... I don't reckon we'll be going with, and the the giant, uh, sorry, the Suns actually have a few running through there now. You, you got Swallow, you got Miller, which they've been going around for ages. But Waller will go in there, McPherson will go in there, Will Brody will start to go in there. You've got Matty Rowell. They've, they've got a host Bowles, uh, Bows, however you bloody say his name, uh, Tobe Watson. If anyone langers, that one's for you, mate. But. Um, point being, the Suns have quite a few young midfielders on the rise, and uh, Greenwood. Anyway, there's a bit of competition. Maybe don't start with him. Just moving down. Jade Gresham, I'm surprised he's in 2% of sides. I reckon if he's the sort of guy, I think if he played one really good pracky game and he had like 10 clearances in a half of footy, I reckon that went unnoticed in the first practice game. But I'm a big fan of him. I still feel as if he won't be a permanent midfielder. Not because he can't, but because he is so dangerous around the goals, but he will definitely push that average up. How far is the question? But I wouldn't be surprised to see him be in the mix of our top six to eight, but you'd be pretty gutsy to go with you. You know, take a fair bit of courage to start the fella. Robbie Gray, 6% of sides. No, no, no. He's, he's on the way out, Robbie. He's not going to play a full season. His body is very questionable. And he will not really get a stack of midfield time either. And yes, I rave on about midfield time. It's bloody important. I don't think we like seeing our players get cold in the forward line. And it's a tough position to play forward in the modern game. You'd much rather be getting easy touches, running through the midfield, getting a chance to lay plenty of tackles, few easy possessions, where the forward line, it's a tough spot to play. You can have good games, but you can also have games where it just doesn't fall for you or your team doesn't have a great day. So we're looking for blokes in the forward line that are mainly playing midfield. We know that. And I don't think Robbie Gray is going to be one of those guys. Darcy McPherson, real buzz player here. He he certainly convinced a few over the preseason and certainly made me start thinking as well. I don't know. 
I don't know. I didn't do... Well, it wasn't that he didn't do enough, but I just like some other options a bit more. There, He could be a fantastic option this year. Play midfield, be outstanding. He could also be a bloke that is a bit of a pre-season hero and has a very good season but doesn't replicate... <laughs> replicate those exact numbers he did in the preseason. So I'm I'm just a tad concerned. Not for any real reason other than gut feel. Sometimes you just gotta think about the gut. That's what I'm doing on this occasion. So I can't put any solid case against him other than I like a few options more than him. And I'm just for whatever reason it doesn't shout out yes get excited. There's something about it. I don't know what but if you're picking him, I don't really have any hardcore evidence to say, no, no, you can't do that. So I understand why his ownership is that, and, it, and it's growing too. Petrarca, I'm a big fan of him, as we know. I was super tempted to start him, but just a little gun shy because I still feel like he will have stints up forward. But I, I do feel like this year will be the year that we see him break into the 90s. Don't know where it's going to land, but he's hovered around that 80 mark for a few years now. I don't think that's going to happen. That'll change. He looks fit. He looks sharp. I expect him to lift that average by at least eight points. Could be 12. Could absolutely break out, be a midfield gun. Because we know that he can be a gun midfielder. That's what he was um, drafted for. So this could be his year. I probably don't have the guts to go with him, you know, once bitten, twice shy, perhaps. But I'm a massive fan of what Petrarca can do. Uh, as we move down into a bit more mid-price territory, Charlie Cameron, 6% of sides. Clearly, that's just a bit of buzz about what excitement Charlie brings to the game. He's not a super coach selection, so that's just a little bit of buzz. I don't think he should be in our sides at all. Connor Rosie, could be anything. Um... I'm not going to say pick him, but it wouldn't surprise me if he bursts onto the scene and becomes an absolute star. I just think at that price, it's awfully risky. You know, He's probably a 20 to 30% chance to be a very, very good selection, but he's also got a really good chance of absolutely burning you. So just remember at 420, he's got to become a keeper. So you've got to remember that. This is what mid prices are all about. You're not picking them, even if they're a little bit cheaper than what you think they're worth. You're not picking a guy to make you sixty or seventy thousand. You got to say, well, is he going to be better than Whitfield or Martin? It's not better than those guys, but is he going to be in front of Devin Smith, Jack Stephen, uh, Brayshaw, a couple of those other blokes, Walters? You know, Heaney. You start to mention a few, and then you go, oh, maybe he'll only be the thirteenth best forward, which is still good because right now he's ranked, you know, in the thirties, but. You just got to think about that. And similar can be said for Jack Martin. I think we'll see improvement. It does sound like he will play a fair bit in the forward line for the Blues, which as soon as I read that article, it was a no-go for me. But he's super talented. Still question marks about his engine and his tank. Yeah, again, similar to Rosie. I think we'll see an improvement in those numbers as they develop. But I don't see them being keepers, and they're not cheap enough to be you know, value players. Um, now, here's one for you. Jonathan Segler. Now, just sit down. I hope you're seated. Wouldn't surprise me if Segler is right in the mix for our top 10 forwards. You didn't fall off your seat, did you? And no, that wasn't a blooper that I forgot to take out. Going to be rucking solo. If McAvoy, that's the rider, if McAvoy is playing defence, which sounds like 100% will be, and Segler takes the ruck all on his own, it would not surprise me to see Segler average in the early 90s. There you go. He's in 3% of teams. And I've just said that a couple other guys could be burn men that have far better cases traditionally. And now I've just come out and said Segler could be a top 10. I know what you're thinking, Shorty, maybe just get checked out. You could be losing your marbles. But I'm just putting something out there that's a little bit different. You haven't thought about it, have you? But just think about it. Look at his fan footy. 
Look at his practice games. Some good numbers in there. Am I going to start him? Not in a million years, but <laughs> it's worth putting out there just to give you something to think about. And, and look, if it, if it works out, I'll be re replaying this in round 14. If it doesn't, I'll never talk about it again, but um, it's, it's just something to think about. Um, what do we got here? Chad Wingard, 5% of teams. Let me grab a water. Um, Wingard's got to be a good chance to get some midfield time. I'm a big fan of what he can do through the middle. Last year was like a little apprenticeship. Came to the Hawks, you know, wasn't fully fit at times. Good games late in the year as he went through the middle. Tom Mitchell comes back. How does that affect him? Not sure. Wouldn't have the guts to start him because he's let us down multiple times over the journey. But, again, don't be shocked if he can average somewhere that starts with a nine um, because we've seen him average nearly 100. I think it was in his second year. So we know he can do it, but there is just there is quite a bit of risk. I mean, positional, his body, and just even consistent performance. So that's quite a few concerns. But if it all comes together for Chad, he's a dynamic player and he'll be very, very good. So you wouldn't start him, but you'd certainly just keep a little eye on him. Um, gets pretty slim. Tom Lynch, like I said with Jeremy Cameron, you could say that Cameron and Lynch are the two best key forwards in the game. Doesn't mean we should be picking him for super coach. I mean, Lynch could win the Coleman and he could still average 86. You know, it's not going to be enough. Um, key forwards, just way too much risk. He's not a high possession winner. He's the sort of bloke who has 11 touches, nine kicks, two handballs and kicks four or five. You know, he'll have days out, but not a reliable selection for our super coach sides. Andrew Brayshaw, massive fan of this young man. I saw him play some games through the practice, uh, through the preseason, and he looked really, really good. He, he looks like he could step up and become a full-time midfielder. I think we sometimes forget that he was a pick two. I don't know. I, I just don't associate him with a... I don't know why. I'm not sure why. I feel like we talk about other top picks and we're waiting for him to come on. I'm not sure whether it's because he's in WA, but he's just sort of floated on the radar. He's a tackling machine, wins it on the inside, and I just feel like he could just easily average 90 and maybe more, maybe. But I, I, I reckon the signs are really, really good. He's in my team and I'm backing him in, so... And he's been popular too. Bit of a buzz guy. His ownership's gone up quite a bit. Um, don't reckon we've got a stack more to discuss aside from a couple of key players that are very popular. But otherwise, here's the first one. Jack Stephen. 38% of teams and he's in my side. And I was super impressed with what I saw against the Bombers. In Colac, he, he looked good. Found the ball really, really well. And it's not always the stat sheet that's super important. It's also what you see visually, how many centre bounces they're attending, because that's a reflection of opportunity. You know, if, if they're attending centre bounces, they might win, you know, 24 touches one day. But if, if they're attending a lot of centre bounces, it's, it's opportunity. It, it means the coaching staff regard them as one of their main men in the midfield. Selwood didn't play that game, but... Joel is also in the twilight of his career, so look, Stephen comes with his risk. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's got his own battles personally, which we hope that he gets on top of, and you hope he just enjoys his footy and his life at the very least. But I think if he comes to the Cats and he's, he's around family, he's a lawn boy, that could be the key to him playing or rediscovering his best football because he could be happy off the field and, and might work perfectly. He's also got injury concerns, but... I think at that price, for what he can average in what is a tough year for picking forwards, you know, I'm on board. I'm really on board. I think he could be a great selection. I think the um, reward outweighs the risk on this occasion. And we should stumble across another man that is of similar discussion. Um, John Patton, I touched on him in the rucks. Shouldn't be starting him. One man, Devin Smith, 53%, and he isn't in my side, but I've been back 
and fourth because it was basically Smith versus Stephen. I was more impressed with Stephen, even though Smith had the best supercoach score on the ground. That was a bit of a visual judgment from Shorty. Um, but I think Smith will be a really good selection as well. I, I just... You, you could argue, Shorty, maybe you should just go Brayshaw to Smith, open up a bit of coin. I'm not ruling that out, but it all depends on what rookies we have on offer. I love Brayshaw. Gee, now I'm on a tangent. But look, Smith, I think he'll be a good selection. He looks to be back to some of his really good form. He was tackling brilliantly, and he's a, he's a smart player around goals, and he gets enough midfield time. It's generally a 50-50 split, so you know he's cheap as chips. It's hard to argue the case. Josh Kennedy, though, 3% of sides, no thank you. Key forward, twilight of his career, no thanks. Been a good player, Josh, but uh, shouldn't be in our sides this year. Uh, who else have we got as we near the end of this one? Paddy Dow, 3% of sides. Yes, yes, I've copped it. None more so from Langers, but uh, look, we probably shouldn't start Paddy Dow, even though Shorty got a little bit excited. But uh, moving on. Uh, what do we got? Jack Lacocious. I touched on him a fair bit in the Defenders video, so you can, you, you can double down and see what I said back then as well. But I remain tempted, but I also remain realistic, and I don't think I'm going to start him as I think... There's just a bit of risk about him. He could be anything. He's playing a supercoach-friendly role down back, but he could get thrown forward. You just never know. Still very young, very raw, in a weak side. Don't know. 8% of sides, but it's very, very risky. Very risky. But um, a few people are getting on board. Ed Richards, not sure about that. He copped a knock, didn't he, as well? But even if he didn't, I don't think so. I'm not sure why he's in 3% of sides. Um, oh, what have I done? What has Shorty done? Somehow I've managed to go up to the top by clicking one button. I, I tell you, I'm terrible with uh, with technology. Bloody hopeless. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's just refocus. What do we got? Probably not much. Oh, there's my old boat Richards. Now we're back on. Cameron Rayner. No. No, we shouldn't be picking Rayner. Very talented player, clearly. He was drafted super high, but I was listening to Fagan on the radio. I heard he'd probably still be playing 30% midfield. Those numbers will go up, but Brisbane's midfield bat's super deep. He's just not going to get enough opportunity. He'll build his tank and he'll be a gun one day, but just not yet. Um... And that will just about round it out. Ben King, I think we've got the wrong King. Keep scrolling, guys, but not Ben. And uh, Townsend, no, 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 don't start with him. But uh, look, Aiden Bonner didn't really see much action in the final preseason game, which is very concerning. I'm not sure if he'd been around one side. If he is, maybe we think about it, but didn't get great opportunity, which is generally not a good indication, so... I think we'll round it up there, guys, because we're starting to move into the um, into the rookies category. Stephen Hill, we know he's injured, so rule him out as well. But look, we're getting close to the round one. Well, at least fingers crossed. Hopefully we've got a game in a couple of days. So I'll have a few more videos to go. A team reveal. We should be able to go live on Thursday if we've got a game. I'll be able to discuss teams and take your questions. So that should be exciting. I'm... I'm holding back excitement just in case it doesn't happen. But if it does, then boom, we've got footy and it'll be great. So stay safe out there. Hopefully the world can return to normal at some stage, but probably months off that. Probably going to get more abnormal before it gets normal. But uh, we'll just uh, we'll ride the bumps. But anyway, subscribe away. Check out the Patreon. I'll be back soon. Cheers.